bless you. What a joy, what a delight it is that God has given us this privilege to come into your homes on this Sunday morning from the Rehoboth Ministries, Holy Trinity Ministries, Church of God in Christ. We are blessed of the Lord and highly favored of him to be able to go into the archives of messages uh, from our past. Today, the message is being brought from the Glad Tidings International Church of God in Christ that is pastored by our second assistant presiding bishop, Bishop Jerry Wayne Macklin. This message was on his 39th church anniversary and I was his invited guest to speak. I pray that God will bless you through this word today and thank you for joining in with us. Let's go to church. Open your mouth right there and worship him. Come on, worship, worship us, come on. Hallelujah. Here is my worship. All of my worship. Father, receive our worship. Give our child. All of our worship. Come on. Here is our worship. We got to move this. All of my worship. Hallelujah. Receive our worship. All of our worship. Lift your hands. And I will not keep silent, but I will always worship you. As long as I am breathing, come on. As long as I am breathing, I will always worship you. I will always worship you. Come on, come on, come on, one more time. And I will not, and I will not be silent, not be silent. But I will always worship you. But I will always always worship you. As long as I am breathing, as long as I am breathing, I will, I will always worship Come on, one time. Get to heaven. Here is my worship. Here is my worship. All of my worship. Come on. All of my worship. Father, receive. Receive my worship. Whoa. Yeah. All of my worship. Here is my worship. Here is my worship. All of my worship. All of my worship. We get ready to turn the service over. For those of you that can stand to your feet. Before we turn the service over, will you lift up your voice? Worship God, everybody. Let's worship God together. A miracle is in the house today. Whatever you need is here right now. The Lord swept through this place in our 10 a.m. hour. And the Holy Ghost is here right here now. Come on. Come on, worship him. Come on, worship him, saints. Forever I'll worship you. It's my worship. All of my worship. Receive my worship. All of my worship. Here is my worship. You're telling the Lord. All of my worship. Father, receive my worship. All of my worship. Now lift your hands and worship him. Hallelujah. You are here. Moving in our midst. I worship you. <laughs> I worship you. 
you are here turning lives around so we worship you oh we worship you so we call you way make miracle work promise keep light in the darkness my god that is who you are oh. look up the heaven tell them way maker miracle worker that's good right there minister music miracle worker tell somebody i'm still on number two miracle worker Anybody believe him to be a miracle worker? Miracle worker. You're the God of miracles. Signs and wonders. We believe in your power. Miracle worker. Promise keeper. Light in the darkness. My God. That is who you are. I know you to be that. Look at somebody say, I know God to be that. And tell him it don't stop there. He's more. He's more. Lift your hands and worship him. Lift your hands and worship him. I'm ready to preach. I want to call your attention to two passages of scripture. Uh, and I believe that this is what God wants to say to us today. From the book of Acts, the 12th chapter, we're going to be reading verses 1 through 5. God bless Dr. John Heath, my good longtime friend, uh, all the way from Charm City. You know, God lives in Baltimore. Uh, <laughs> Then we're going to go to 1 Timothy, which is one of your scriptures, 6th chapter, and we're going to read the 12th verse. So the Bible says, now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword, and because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Verse number five says, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. In First Timothy, the sixth chapter, and the 12th verse, it says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. I want to preach today about fighting with prayer. Fighting with prayer. This day and time that we're living in, there are uh, so many people that are fighting what they, for what they call a cause. Uh, some of the things people lose time fighting on, I think that they could better channel their energy and be more productive. Uh, incidentally, even when you look around the church world, uh, if we could only put all of our energy towards fighting against the devil and not trying to be adversarial to one another, then I believe God would be glorified. But I've come to realize that there are even some schizophrenic people in the church. 
Well, if they don't have anything to fight about, they'll invent something to fight about. And all along, the enemy is standing back, smiling and laughing at us while we can be productive and be great for God's kingdom. Uh, this is a time, a day and time that we're living in where we are seeing and hearing things that we'd have, we would have never dreamed about. Uh, and it seems like when you've heard the most shocking, you'll hear something else that will out, out top the thing that you heard was the most shocking. And I'm glad today to be here to witness this great sea of men, of godly men, men in the church. That's just wonderful because God has given man a special place. Uh, and I'm glad to be a man. I said, I'm glad to be a man. And uh, God bless my wife, Lady Hope, and the Hope of Church, Holy Trinity. God bless all of you. Uh, but I'm glad to be a man. And, and brothers, I'm glad that God made woman. Amen. I say this. I say if God made anything uh, for man other than the Holy Ghost better than a woman, he kept it to himself. And so uh, it's good to see these mighty men of God that uh, have sold out to the Lord. And that's what we need. We need men of God that uh, have one agenda, and that is promoting God's kingdom. And so uh, it is important that men have a prayer life. I say it's important that men have a prayer life. Prayer, contrary to popular belief in the church, is not a women's movement. Uh, Jesus said that men ought to always pray and not to faint. So it's important. Come on, say it's important. It's important that we are consistent and committed to prayer. Prayer. Come on, say prayer. prayer. I'm glad I'm in a talk back to me type church. Prayer is the sincere desire of the heart. It's the way we communicate to God, and it's the way God communicates back to us. Many times we spend a lot of time telling God what we want him to hear. But we don't stay there long enough to hear what he wants to say to us. But prayer is a two-way conversation. It's a way that we talk to God. It's not just us sending up words but it's a matter of the heart. It is the sincere desire of the heart. I said it's a heart thing. And God listens to our heart talk when we pray. Uh, I'm so glad that God listens to our heart talk when we pray. And uh, I remember, I can remember so well, uh, growing up we could not speak. Uh, clearly, but we were taught how to pray. You remember the prayer before we went to sleep at night? Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. And then we didn't by saying, God bless mommy and daddy and everybody in the whole world. We were different from other children. We went to school before we would start eating our food. We were taught to bow our heads and pray. We were taught to say, God is grace and God is good. Lord, we thank you for this food. By thy hands, we all are fed. Give us, Lord, this our daily bread. Before we would go out, our parents would anoint us with oil. We'd be in school with greasy foreheads because they prayed for us. Later on, somebody picked up the song and said, somebody prayed for me had me on their mind, took the time to pray. I'm so glad that they prayed for me. And then all of our devilment and all the things that we got involved in, I want you to know that it was not good luck that got you through. It was not your skill or not your ability, but somebody somewhere was praying for you. Somebody communicated to God from their heart. 
and God heard their prayer. I said it's a hot thing. Uh, I know it's a hot thing, although when we pray, our posture, we kneel as a sign of total surrenderance to God. But I found out that everybody kneeling is not praying. Uh, I found out that uh, when we kneel, we do surrender and submit to the will of Almighty God. And if those words from your mouth are not coming from your heart, it's just talking. But prayer is a hot thing, and God is a tent to the prayers that are made by his children. And so we know that God listens to the heart talk when we pray. The Bible says that God told Isaiah to go and tell Hezekiah to set your house in order. He said you're going to die and not live. Hezekiah, being on his sick bed, turned his face to the wall and began to remind God of the things that he did to stop idol God worship and unrighteousness in the temple. And God said to Isaiah, go back and tell Hezekiah that I've heard his prayer. And I've seen his tears, and I'm going to give him 15 more years. That's prayer laying down. Then the Medes and the Persians got together, and they went to the king and said, King, you are a mighty man of God. You're a great man. There's no other God like you. And for 30 days, nobody else will pray to no other God but you. And anybody that's found praying to any other God will be cast into the lion's den. But when Daniel got the news, Daniel opened up his window, knelt down, and prayed three times a day. Daniel's window was pointed to the city of Jerusalem. And Daniel remembered Solomon's prayer. Solomon prayed and said, Lord, the time might come where your children will be captured and carried into a heathen land, but always make it possible if they just look in the direction of the temple that you'll hear their prayer. Solomon said, Lord, if you shut up heaven, there'll be no rain. Or if you send down the locusts to devour your people, but always hear the cry of your children. God answered Solomon that night in the dream and said, you're right. If I shut up heaven, it won't be no rain. Or if I send down the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. He says, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray, Seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Said, then will I hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sin, and I'll heal the land. And so when Daniel prayed, God heard Daniel's prayer. When the king found out that Daniel had violated his law, the king sent for Daniel. And they took Daniel to the lion's den. But on his way to the lion's den, the king, the heathen king, made a declaration. He said, O oh, thou, Daniel, greatly beloved of God, thou God whom thou servest continually, he will deliver you. They opened the mouth of the den and dropped Daniel in the lion's den. About that time, God said to one of his angels, go down and lock those lion's jaw. The angel went down and locked the lion's jaw and went back to God. Daniel hit the bottom of the den, and early that morning, the king went to the lion's den and said, O oh, Thou, Daniel, greatly beloved of God, has thou God whom thou serveth continually, has he delivered you? And Daniel responded by saying, O king, live forever. The God that I serve sent down his angels and locked the lion's jaw. Come on, tell somebody that's prayer. Kneeling. Jesus says that the Pharisee and the sinner stood there in the courtyard praying. Pharisee gave those wonder, one of those wonderful prayers. Prayed and said, Lord, I've kept the commandments. Lord, I've paid my tithe. I'm not anything like that sinner standing over there. But on the other side of the yard, there was a young man who put his hands across his chest and just said, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Jesus said he went away more justified than the other. So whether if it's kneeling, whether if it's standing, or whether if it's laying, it's a matter of the heart. 
Come on, say it's a hot thing. Now, many things that we pray for uh, do not line up with the will of God. Many times we have prayed, we have been disobedient, and we pray to God without repenting and expect for God to hear us. But the Bible says, if ye are willing and obedient, that you'll eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you'll be devout with the sword for the mouth of of the Lord has spoken it. Then oftentimes the enemy runs interference when we pray. He does not want God to get our prayer. He does not want God to respond to our prayer. So the enemy causes us to doubt. He causes us to fear. He causes us to get frustrated. He causes us to have anxiety. He wants to hinder our prayer, and he wants to hinder God's answer. But I'm glad that God hears uh, and he answers prayer. Why don't y'all help me out? Come on, tell somebody God still hears, and he answers prayer. And then there are times when God himself will challenge the sincerity of our prayer. Remember when the Syrophoenician woman went to Jesus? And said, Lord, my daughter is grievously vexed of a devil. Jesus looks at her and says, it doesn't make sense to take the children's bread and give it to the dogs. But she said, yes, Lord. Woo! Aren't you glad to be in the yes, Lord, church? Come on, try it out right there. Just lift your hands and say, yes, Lord. And say, yes, Lord, doesn't mean I like what you're doing. Yes, yes, Lord, doesn't mean I understand what you're doing. But yes, Lord, means I approve of whatever you do. So anyway, you bless me, Lord. Anyway, you deal with me. And my answer will be yes. Yes, Lord, yes. Gee, and the woman just looked at him and said, yes, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. She went away with what God uh, with what she wanted from the Lord. Then the enemy wants us to be discouraged when we pray. And so he challenges and attacks us with pre-prayer doubt. He tries to say to you, what's the sense of you even praying? You know that God is not going to hear you. Then he attacks us with during prayer doubt. While you're right there in the middle of it, while you're talking to God, he is in the other ear telling you that God is not going to hear you. Then he attacks us with post-prayer doubt. After you've made your petition to the Lord, he comes by to tell you that all of your labor was in vain. But I got good news for you. We can't let the enemy affect our prayer. Can't let him affect our prayer life. You got to have faith and believe that God still hears and he still answers prayer. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things that are not seen. Now Jesus, uh, while he was here with the disciples, he was everything that they needed. But he knew that it was time for him to leave here. He knew in order to fulfill God's plan of salvation, he would have to die. And so to make sure that the church was in order, Jesus met with the disciples. And in their conversation, Jesus said, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? They responded by saying, Some say that thou art Elias. Others say that thou art Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Jesus responds back to them and said, I'm not really concerned about what the some says are saying. Uh, some weren't with me when I turned the water into wine. Some weren't with me when I calmed the raging storm. Some weren't with me when I unstopped deaf ears and unloosed stammering tongues. Some weren't with me. And I took that little boy's lunch and fed 5,000 men, not including women and children. So whom do you say that I am? Peter said, thou art the Christ, 
the Son of the living God. Jesus said, flesh and blood have not revealed this unto you, but it came to you of my Father. And blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, and upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Then Jesus told them he was going to have to die. Peter said, same one that spoke out, Peter said, be it far from you, Lord. And Jesus just rebuked him and let him know that to complete God's plan of salvation, I've got to die. And so I see them when they captured him, led him from judgment hall to judgment hall. I'm going somewhere. Led him from judgment hall to judgment hall. Whipped him until blood ran down his back. Put a crown of thorns on his brow, then made him carry his own cross. How cruel it was for them to crucify your Lord and my Lord. But I'm glad that he understood his purpose. He understood his plan. Isaiah had already prophesied and said he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity and the chastisement of our peace would be upon him and with his stripes. We are healed, so they made him carry his own cross. Carried his cross, I'll let you know when. Carried his cross uh, through the streets of the city. Fell down under the load of the cross. But uh, Jesus never gave up on his assignment, got there to the top of Golgotha's hill, laid the cross down on the ground and drove the nails in his hands and drove the nails in his feet. Then to make sure that he would not fall from the cross, they secured him on the cross by tying ropes around his arm. When they stood the cross, up the cross, jarred down in the ground. When the cross jarred down in the ground, the nails ripped his flesh. But I'm glad that he stayed right there. Did not come down off of the cross. Because he had you and me in mind. After a while, they pierced him in the side and out came blood and water. While he was on the cross, he uh, began to speak from the cross. He spoke those words. Y'all called them the seven last words. But I heard him say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Heard him say, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. He kept on talking and said, woman, behold your son, and son, behold your mother. He said, Eli, Eli, lama sabbatana. That is to say, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He kept on talking and he said, I thirst. After a while, the Bible said that he cried with a loud voice and said, it is finished. In other words, I've already laid the foundation and I've opened up the way. I've made it possible that whoever comes to the Lord can be saved. It's finished. I've done what you've told me to do. I've fulfilled the plan that you told me to fulfill. And now I'm hanging here on the cross. It is finished. But then he uh, locked his head in his shoulders and opened up his mouth with a loud voice and said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. He died, y'all, till the sun stopped shining. He died till the moon took a blood hemorrhage. And ran down in blood, he died until the hills began to skip like rams. I'm glad, I'm glad, uh, uh-huh. I'm glad that he died. Living, he loved me, dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins 
far away. They took him off of the cross and put him down in Joseph's borrowed tomb. The tomb had to be borrowed because he just needed it for a few days. Early on that Sunday morning, God sent down the angel, said, go down and roll the stone away. When they rolled the stone away, he wasn't there. Uh, he had went down into hell and preached to those souls that were bound in prison. But he told the disciples he was going to have to die. He told them that he was going to rise again. They were overwhelmed with grief and they began to doubt. But he had risen just like he said. And I see them headed down uh, the Emmaus Road. And while they were walking, they were talking about how they crucified the Lord. And how he died on that cross. And Jesus joined in that conversation. They were so overwhelmed with grief that they did not recognize who Jesus was. And that's what the enemy wants to do with us. He wants to block our minds and cloud our vision and so we can't see who Jesus is. But you ought to lift your hands if you really know him and say, I'm glad. I'm glad. So glad that I know him. I'll tell you how I got to know him. I didn't get to know him through my song. I didn't get to know him through my dance. But I've got to know him in the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his suffering. Jesus uh, goes all the way to the room with them and uh, sat down and they still didn't recognize who he was. But Jesus began to break the bread. And when he broke the bread, they recognized who he was. And Jesus disappeared out of their midst. Then I see him again. He met them up on the mountaintop. And uh, they were concerned about political expedience. They said unto him, Lord, will thou at this time restore the kingdom unto Israel? But Jesus said, it's not for you to know the time or the season of the things that God has put in his own power. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me. Both in Jerusalem and in Judea. And in Samaria and the uttermost parts of the world. But go back. Go back to the city of Jerusalem and tarry there until you are endowed with power from on high. They went back to uh, Jerusalem. They were waiting for the blessed promise of the Father. The first day, nothing happened. Second, third, fourth, and fifth day, still nothing happened. Sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth day, still nothing happened. Nothing but come on, Jesus. Nothing but send the power. Nothing but sin, the Holy Ghost. But they were all scattered in mind. But the Bible said early on that tenth day morning, when they were all with one accord, and the Bible said, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all together, and they were all with one accord. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting they went out in the marketplace and began to stumble under the power of God and the folk said that these men are drunk off of new wine but I heard Peter say we're not drunk as you suppose but this is that that was spoken of by the prophet Joseph well, and it shall come to pass in the last days. I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. Thank you, Jesus. The church began to grow. God added to the church. But as God blessed the church, the 
devil got mad and persecution broke out in the church. They did not know what to do, but the Bible said they gathered together and they began to pray. And when they prayed, the building was shaken where they prayed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Why don't y'all help me out? Come on and tell somebody. Put your dukes down. Come on, tell them, put down your weapon. Come on, tell them we need to learn how to fight. And we've got to do it in prayer. Thank you, Jesus. And the Bible said in Acts the 12th chapter, come on and look at somebody and tell them he finally got to the text but the Bible said in Acts the 12th chapter that Herod the king killed James the brother of John with the sword and when he saw that it pleased the Jews he sent for Peter the pastor of the church he sent for Peter the one that God put in leadership he sent for Peter the one God gave the keys to he sent for Peter. He understood that Peter was the man of God. So he sent for Ma Peter. He sent for Ma Ma uh, uh, Macklin Peter. He wanted to stop Mac Macklin. Uh, uh, Peter. He tried to stop him by putting him in jail and to make sure that he would not escape. They chained him for containing the soldiers and expecting after Easter to release the man of God. But I'm so glad I said I'm so glad that the saints knew how. They knew how to fight. I'm glad I said, I'm so glad that the saints understood that prayer is a spiritual weapon that the Lord has given to the saints. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And the Bible said that Mother Mary said, let's gather together. Let's come to my house. What you going to do, Mary? You going to plan a protest. Don't have time for that. We're going to try to raise bail money. I don't have time for that. Well, what are you going to do? We're going to pray. We're going to call on the name of the Lord. And the Bible said that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower and a righteous one they're in and they are safe I'm glad that the saints begin to pray I don't know what they said in their prayer but I can imagine they begin to say Lord deliver our pastor Lord deliver our leader Lord bring him out Lord set him free I don't know but they said in their prayer but God heard their prayer God said to his angel I need you to go down and deliver my servant the angel walked in to the prison and waved his hands and the soldiers fell off into a deep sleep then the angel walked over and he smote Peter and told Peter get up come on y'all come on strike somebody just tell them get up you've been down too long get up God has sent your deliverance get up God has set you free and when Peter stood up the shackles fell off of his hand when he stood up the shackles fell off of his feet Ooh, I, I feel the chains falling. Ooh, I feel the chains falling. I feel loosed. I've been set free. Is there anybody in here that can lift your hands and say, I'm so glad? 
so glad that I feel the chains falling. Yes, Lord, I can walk like you want me to walk. The chains are broken. I can praise like you want me to praise. The chains are broken. I can run like he wants me to run. Chains are broken. I feel. I feel chains falling. Yes, Lord. After a while, the angel said to Peter, Girdle yourself. Put your clothes on. God has sent your deliverance. The angel led him through the first ward, and the gate swung open. Led him through the second ward, and the gate swung open. Peter got outside. He looked up. He could see the stars and the moon. He knew then that God had delivered him. Then Peter, where are you going? Are you going to the council meeting? Are you going over there to City Hall and let them know that you got out anyway? But I hear Peter say, no, I'm going over there where the saints of God are praying. He got there to Mary's house, knocked on the door. Little Rhoda came running to the door. She got so excited, she pulled back the curtain. She could see the answer to her prayer. Standing at the door, I got to quit, y'all. Why don't you tell somebody, don't stop praying. Come on, tell them, hold on, just a little while longer. Come on, tell them, don't give up. Don't you dare quit. Don't fall in the towel. Hold on, just a little while longer. Yes, Lord, tell them the answer to your prayer is at the door. Come on, y'all. Come on, tell somebody the answer to your prayer is at the door. And I heard the old song say, don't stop praying for the Lord is nigh. Don't stop praying. He'll hear your cry. The Lord has promised his word is true. Don't stop praying. He will answer you. Step. Yes, Lord, I'm glad. I said, I'm glad that I've learned how to fight in prayer. I'm glad. I said, I'm so glad that I've learned. You've got to fight the good fight of faith. You've got to lay hold onto eternal life. And God has made you armed and dangerous you're armed with the power and the word of god half step you're armed you're armed with the word of god that says no weapon that's formed against you shall prosper in every tongue that rises up against you in judgment you shall condemn you're armed with finally my brethren be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I've got the clothes, but I hear them. Peter still at the door, knocking at the door. After a while, they heard the knock on the door. They opened up the door and their miracle walked in. Oh, y'all. Yes, Lord. Come on, y'all. I got to quit now, but I need you to help me close. Reach out. Come on, reach out. Grab the doorknob. Open up the door. Let your miracle come in. Joy. Peace. Hope.
Love Come in Until I walk Like you want me to walk Come in Until I talk Like you want me to talk Come in I'll do better Oh Come in Come in Come in Come in I need my peace back Come in I need my joy back Come in Yes Lord You're welcome to Come in You're invited So come in Oh Lord Come in Yes Lord Yes Lord Yes Lord Yes Lord This is my real clothes But on the other hand Come on tell somebody On the other hand Every miracle Is not coming in On the other hand There are some miracles You've got to take the fight To the enemy In other words Reach out Grab the doorknob Open up the door And step Step Into your deliverance Step Into your healing Step into your breakthrough. Step into your destiny. Step, step, step. Let them heal your mind. Step, let them heal your soul. Step, oh, step. Step, step, I'm stepping in victory, I'm stepping in power, I'm stepping in his glory, yeah, 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 I got to stop y'all, but grab somebody and hold them by the hand, come on and shake them and tell them we serve notice to the devil the fight is on fight 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 in prayer fight with the word of God fight with now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen fight I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercy of God that you present your body a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God fight 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 with the Lord in my light my salvation fight with the weight on the Lord be of good courage he shall strengthen your heart fight with our press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God that is in Christ Jesus fight 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 down on your knees down on my knees when trouble rise I talk to Jesus beyond the sky he promised me he'd hear my plea if I tell it if I tell it if I tell it tell it on my knees when days are dark friends are few and I don't know what to do there's one way I find these I tell it to Jesus yeah 
Yeah! 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 Yes, Lord! Come on, give God praise, everybody! going to inconvenience some of you but I need you to go tell five people we're in this thing together come on together we're in it together we're in it together never take it for granted to think that everyone that is viewing is in right relationship with the Lord. If you're there viewing with us and you don't know the Lord and you want to be in right relationship with him, or if you just want to reaffirm your commitment to the Lord, will you repeat this prayer after me? Dear Lord, I thank you for another chance to come to you. I come to you, dear Lord, confessing and forsaking all of my sins. I believe your word that if I will confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. Lord, I believe and I accept you as Lord and master of my life. Brother, sister, let me tell you, if you said that prayer and meant that prayer from your heart, let me be the first to welcome you to the family of God. Now, for your spiritual growth, join a Bible teaching, Bible believing church and grow in the Lord. God bless you. Listen, by way of announcement, will you uh, join with us in our 714 weekly morning manner? My God, the Lord meets us in prayer and then we speak from the word of the Lord. Join with us every day at 714 on Facebook Live for Morning Manor. There might be someone today uh, that has not taken advantage of the giving opportunity. I want you to know that there is certainly a blessing in giving. There might be some today that wish to tithe to the ministry. Won't you go to our screen and see the methods that we have of giving and the Lord will certainly bless you. He promised in his word, give and it shall be given you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. He said that men were given to your bosom. He said he would open the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings that you won't have room enough to receive and he would rebuke the devourer for thy sake. Thank you for your giving. Now Father, bless these gifts that we have received today. Honor your word, give back 30, 60, 100 fold. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God, amen. Now, Father, we thank you for this time that you've allowed us to spend with you. Now, as we part, oh God, from the sanctuary and from this Facebook live stream, we ask God that you would dismiss us from this place, but never from your presence. Then bring us back together at your appointed time without any hurt, harm, or loss to any of us, your little ones. We ask these favors now in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Know that I love you with the love of the Lord.